Okay, people! Today, you're all going over to Winter Wonderland, and we, we know that you love to go and see all those lights. But folks, remember why we're here and what Christmas is all about. You're going to be giving presents. But where does the idea of presents come from? And where does Christmas really come from? Well, look at the name itself. Christ is in the name. And that's what we're doing. That's why we're here today. To bring back Christ into Christmas. Now, this is Speaker's Corner. You're walking right past it. God bless you as you go over there and enjoy yourself. But please stop and listen for a while. Listen to our songs. We're going to sing about that Christ. We're going to worship that Christ. We're going to introduce that Christ to you. And we're going to bring back Christmas as it was intended. Are you ready? Do you want to hear about Christ? Let's go and let's have the singers. Bring it on. Let's start with, oh, come all ye faithful. Please sing with us if you know the songs. Over to you, choir. about that night. Amen. Special night. Who's Go to it, choir. Go on, Jay Smith. Sing, sing. Sing, sing. sing, Jay Smith. Sing, Jay Smith. I'm coming to that man. You are not a man, you are a woman.
tonight, we're singing about a special night. This is the Christmas Eve, the Eve before when Christ was born. It was the night that we're celebrating. We will be in just a few weeks. But folks, why is it we're celebrating that night? See, folks, this is not just air fairy. This is not just myth. This is not just legend. It actually happened in history. And it was prophesied over 700 years earlier. The prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, he said, this shall be a sign. A virgin will conceive. Now, folks, in my world, virgins don't conceive. In your world, virgins don't conceive. Proving that something special was going to happen on this night. Something special was going to happen on this day. And then what does it say next? A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Not a daughter, but a son. Referring back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Perfect. Why? Because this matches with everything we've seen that's gone before. God said this at the very beginning, that through a woman's lie, through Eve's lie, it had to be a woman, that he who comes and destroys the head of Satan, and Satan will bruise his heel, through this woman's lie, the Messiah would come. The Messiah, who we know as also the Son of God, who we know also as the Son of Man. And it would be this Messiah who comes through a virgin. Now, Muslims, you should know what I'm talking about. Because in the Quran, it does talk about a virgin who conceives. In Surah 19, Ayah 20, and there's only one virgin in the history of mankind who has conceived. Even the Quran gets that right. And who is that virgin? Her name was Mary. Be careful, get the right sex. Come on, I know you want to talk about Jesus, and you want about singing about Jesus, but let's talk about that virgin first. The virgin was Mary. It was on that, that woman, it was from her boom that such sign would come. And then what does Isaiah say next? Isaiah then says, and he shall be called Emmanuel. And what does that mean? God with us. So when a virgin conceives, when she conceives a son, who is it? God is with us, folks. That's why Christmas is so important. And that's why we're here now. We're singing this song because it was God that came at Christmas time. It was God that came through a virgin. It was Emmanuel, God with us. 700 years before that was prophesied, it was then revealed and fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Let's now sing more about this story and about this person. Back to the choir again.
Well, it's like that. But it's right. It's a song for those of you. It's a song you might not know. But the main Maybe. word is hallelujah. And hallelujah is the highest praise you can give to God. And hallelujah means the same thing no matter what language you say it in. It's the highest praise to God. to the next song, but it's not going to be the one we thought was going to be. It was about the Alpha and the Omega, and I was going to try to bring that all together, because this child who is coming to earth, this one who is Jesus Christ, Christ, Christmas, that's where the name Christmas comes from. Look and see who he is. He's not just any child. The song we were going to sing is called the Alpha and the Omega. The first and the last, the first letter of the Greek alphabet and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. This is the title that Jesus was given in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. And that's why this is not just any child. This is not just anyone. This child who came at Christmas was God himself, the first and the last, the Almighty, Al Shaddai. We were going to sing that as well, Al Shaddai. The Almighty One. Folks, we're not just talking about anybody today. It wasn't just any child that was born 2,000 years ago. This was God Himself. Al Shaddai, the Almighty One. Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Folks, can you see why we celebrate Christmas? Why would this great God, the Almighty One, why would He come to earth? That's what we have to ask today. Why would he come as a little babe, the weakest of all humans? Why would he take on that form, take on the form of a man and become one of us? Walk and talk on earth like us, have to go to the toilet. Yes, he did go to the toilet. My God can go to the toilet. And if your God can't go to the toilet, you need a bigger God. Thank God we've got a big, big God. But folks, he can also, you prick him and he cries. You cut him and he bleeds. My God took on all the infirmities that we have. He even died on the cross. See folks, that's why he had to come. He didn't just come to walk and talk. He didn't just come to be as a babe. He grew up to be a man, but he came for one reason, and we're going to get into that as we go on. He came to save, and that's what his name means. Jesus, Yeshua, God who saves. We have a God who saves. But he had to come to work to do that. He had to come and limit himself and become one of us. Yes, as a little babe. Folks, can you see why we love Christmas? Why is it that we want to sing about it like the angels who sang? And I hope the next song is Park the Angels. Park the Angels. Park 
the Herald Angels sings. That's why we're here. And because, like those angels, we're excited. Are you excited? Yeah. What a great God we've got. Yeah. Folks, sing along with us as we sing like the angels about parking and also about hallelujahs. <laughs>
glorified. What is it they're talking about? Why and who is it should be glorified? Well, you heard at the very end, it's Jesus that needs to be glorified. Why? Because Jesus, his name means the one who saves, God who saves, Yeshua. It comes from the Hebrew. And folks, you need to ask, what is it this salvation is from? What is it we're saved from? I hear that all the time from people. We're saved from our sins. Now people say, hold on a minute. I'm not a sinner. Folks, everybody's a sinner. Everybody walking by here, you're all sinners. Whether you like to admit it or not, you all know deep down inside that you need to be saved from this sin. But what sin exactly? The sin of disobedience against God himself. And to understand that, you need to go back to the very beginning. You need to go back to Genesis chapter 1 and 2, where everything went wrong. That's where the fall began. That's where, as I was taught in Sunday school, that was where I was taught that Adam and Eve sinned. And because of that one sin, folks, it was only one sin that destroyed that relationship, that threw them out of God's presence, that caused sin to come in the world. Everything that you do today becomes from that one sin. Which means we can't be in God's presence again. Do you want to be in God's presence? Yeah. Oh, I want to be in God's presence again. Yeah. But I can't because of my sin. There's or something has to be done. And the Bible is very clear what has to be done. There's not a thing we can do about it. Death has to be given. Blood has to be shed. Leviticus 17 says very clear in verse 11. For atonement for sin can only happen if death is given, if blood is shed. But not just anybody's death, otherwise we're all dead. Not just anybody's blood. It has to be he who was sinned against. It had to be God's own blood, his own death. Now can you understand why God had to come to earth? Yep. Now can you understand why God had to take on human form, become a babe, grow up, and then die on the cross? And that's why at Christmas time we're here celebrating that event. That's when God chose down to pay the price, came down as a human. He who did not consider equality something to be grasped. He, meaning Jesus, equality with God, something to be grasped. Humbled himself, took on the form of a man, even to the point of death. That's my God. That's my Jesus. Jesus is the one we're singing about. Jesus Christ. Christmas. Christ's name is in Christmas. Amen. That's why we're here singing these carols. Yeah. That's why we're here talking about him, trying to get you back to the real story, the real meaning, why we do celebrate Christmas. Oh, come all ye faithful. If you really believe that, then come all ye faithful and sing with us about that Jesus, that Christ, about that Christmas 2,000 years ago that we're going to celebrate in two weeks. God be with you. Come and help us sing. Oh, come all ye faithful. Can we sing now?
expecting a little baby. They weren't expecting someone who would come to suffer. That's because they had not read Isaiah 53. Had they gone back to, back to Isaiah 53, had they gone back to Isaiah, one of the greatest prophets who had talked about this one, this Messiah that was going to come, had they just looked at their scriptures, they would see that first he would come to suffer and then he would come to conquer. But he would come as a suffering servant. And that's exactly who Jesus is. The Messiah, even the Jews in the time of Jesus, they were waiting for him there in the Sanhedrin in Matthew chapter 26, verse 63 and 64. Caiaphas, the chief priest, who knew no more than anybody else, he knew exactly what, who was standing in front of him. And he said to Jesus standing in front of him, Are you the Son of God? Are you the Messiah? Are you the one we've been waiting for? And what did Jesus say? Yes, I am. I am the Messiah. Now, Muslims, you should know who we're talking about. Because in your Quran, 11 times it talks about the al masihu the Messiah. And only one person is given that title in the Quran. No one else is given that title in the Quran. And who is he? Jesus. Jesus Christ. 
Only Jesus has given that title in the Quran. So at least Muslims should understand who we're talking about. But you don't know what al masihu means. You have no idea its meaning. And what are you supposed to do when you don't know a question? Thank you. Surah 10, Ayah 94. Surah 21, Ayah 7. Surah 4, Ayah 136. You want me to go on? Over and over it says, if you have any question, go to the people all but come back to us. Let us tell you who the Messiah is. The Messiah could be only one man in the whole history of mankind. And what's his name? Jesus! I can't hear you! Jesus! Who is the King of Kings? Jesus! Who is the Lord of Lords? Jesus! Who is God in heaven? Jesus! Who is God on earth? Jesus! Who died on the cross? Jesus! Who then rose again? Jesus! Who is now in heaven? Jesus! Who is for you and me? Jesus! Who to call you home. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Oh, I love that name. Is that what we're singing about? Amen. And did not Jesus come 2,000 years ago? And did he not come as a baby child? And is that not why we're celebrating Christmas? We're talking about a little baby that was born. To us, a son is born. To us, a son is given. Why don't we sing about it? Let's sing, To Us the Sun is Born. <laughs> For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the sun of man shall be upon his shoulders. For unto us a child is born, unto us Oh, 
Let me go see what this bread is selling this bread. Yeah. the name on high of Jesus Christ. Everything we're singing today is about one man, but wasn't a man to begin with. He was a child, but not just any child. He was a son, but not just any son. You hear the song we were singing, for unto us a child is given, a son is born. I'm sorry, a child is born, a son is given. It's interesting, let's break that up. That comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. The prophet Isaiah knew about it 700 years before it happened. He knew that a child would be born to a virgin. But it wasn't just any child. A son would be given. Who was this son? Not just the son of Joseph, because he wasn't the son of Joseph. Joseph had nothing to do with his birth. So who was his father? You know who his father is. God the Father. And as the son of God, he inherited everything the father inherited, which means he was God himself. Look at what Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and 7 says. Because there you see the definition of who this son would be. This son would be the almighty father. He would be the everlasting father. The almighty God. The prince of peace. Let me repeat those. The almighty God. The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's why we were just singing it, were we not? See, that's a song that reminds us who this son is. He's not just any son, folks. This is not like any other human son. This son is God himself, Almighty God. This son is Everlasting Father, Almighty and Everlasting Father. And this son is the Prince of Peace. See, when he comes, then peace would come. Folks, don't you want peace today? Isn't that what everybody wants? There is only one place, only one person, only one son that can give you peace. 
and that is Jesus himself. Allah cannot give you peace. Muhammad cannot give you peace. Nobody can give you peace. Not even I can give you peace. But there is one who can. He who was vindicated. He who was elastic. He who was hated. He who was whipped. Yes, he who drug that cross through the street and he who was nailed to that cross have we just been singing. He came to heaven to earth. He came from to earth to the grave. But he did stay in the grave. Oh, I love that son. Yes, he died on Friday and that's the day Muslims love to celebrate. That's not the day we celebrate. Friday's here, but Sundays are coming. It's Sunday that we celebrate. It's today that we celebrate. Because in rising again, he destroyed death. He destroyed everything that Satan had done. That fall, that destruction that happened in Genesis 3 that we talked about earlier. Everything that happened back there in the Garden of Eden was destroyed by Jesus dying and rising again. What a God we have. What's his name? Jesus. And it is Jesus who died. It is Jesus who rose again. It is Jesus that came to earth. It is his day, his birthday that we're celebrating. And that's why we're singing these songs. That's why we sing Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Praise be to God for what he did 2,000 years ago. Sing with us as we sing that praise to that son, a child, yes, at one time, but became, has always been a son. He didn't become the son of God. He was always the son of God. He will be always the son of God, which means he is God himself. Hosanna to that son. Hosanna.
singing about today. Now you may say, hold on a minute, that has nothing to do with Christmas. Folks, you're right. It doesn't have anything to do specifically with Christmas. But unless God came to earth as a little babe, unless Christ came to earth, unless the Messiah came to earth, there would be no salvation. That's why we're singing Hosanna. God had to take on human form. God had to limit himself and be limited like you and me. That means God had to walk and talk like you and me. That means God had to eat. That means God had to go to the toilet. And yes, that means God had to die. Now for many people that's difficult to hear. I know for many Muslims that's difficult for you to hear. You believe that God is totally other, never comes to earth. Well see, my God comes to earth anytime he wants. We've got a pretty big God, don't we? The fact that he can come to earth means that he truly is Akbar, the greatest. The fact that he did come to earth and came as a little baby, as the weakest of all humans, showed us not only model for us what we're to be, 
the fact that he went and he willingly went and died on the cross. And that's what we're singing about right now, aren't we? We're talking about his death, which is going to come in Easter time. We'll be back here in Easter to sing about that. But right now, before he could die, he had to come as a child. Before he could die on the cross, he had to come as a human being. And that's what Christmas is all about. God taking on human form, coming as a babe, yes, in Bethlehem, which had been prophesied 400 years beforehand, which had been prophesied by Isaiah 700 years beforehand. Oh, don't stop there. There are 300 prophecies of who this person was. That this person would be born in Bethlehem. That he would die without any bones being broken in Psalm 22. That he would be buried between two thieves. That he would be, I'm sorry, he would be die between two thieves. That he would be buried in a rich man's tomb. All of these prophesies, all of these prophecies, hundreds of years before, all come down to one man. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Can I hear you? Jesus. Oh, what a name. What a name. What a name. But there's another name that we're going to talk about. That's the name we're going to sing about. There's another name that Jesus incorporated, which really underlines what we're all talking about today. Because he's not just any son. He's not just any child. He's not just any babe. He is God himself, Yahweh. Yes. So let's sing about that name. That's your name. Let's bring it up and let's talk about that name because that's the name we want to introduce at this Christmas time. Sing with us if you know the song. At your name. Over to the choir. Does that sound right?
King of all kings. But remember the song we sang before, At Your Name. How many of you picked up the name that we were talking about there? Now most of you would say, it is Jesus. Yes, that is true. These are all about Jesus. And Jesus Christ, the Messiah, that's what Christ means in Greek, the Messiah in Hebrew. That's what his function was to save, the anointed one to save. But at your name, what was the name that they kept on repeating? Did anybody pick it up? Did any of you singers pick it up? What is the name? Jesus. No, the other name. Yahweh. Yahweh. It's only four letters, Yahweh. We don't know. It could be Yehovah. But most scholars believe that is Yahweh. Why is that important? Folks, it is hugely important. Because when you look at the Old Testament, there are three names for God. Adonai is the name that is the descriptive name for God. It's only found about 304 times. The generic name for God is Elohim. Interestingly, Elohim is plural. It's three or more. If it be singular, it'd be Eloi. If it be dual, it'd be Eloha. The fact that it's Elohim, it means it's three or more. That's interesting. And that's found over 2,000 times. But that's still not God's best name. Because, see, it is generic. Anybody can be called the God. Moses wanted to know God's name before he went down to Egypt. He turned to God and he said, what is your name? So when I go down to Egypt, they'll know what God I'm representing. Amen. They'll know what God I stand for. Amen. Tell me your name, he asked. They're in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. And what did God give him at that time? Anybody know? I am, I am who I am in English. Ego Amy in Greek. But what is it in Hebrew? Yahweh! That's the name he gave in 1400 B.C., 3,400 years ago. And then he said, this shall be my name forever. Amen. Every prophet knew that name. If you have any doubt, 6,823 6, times you will find that name in the Old Testament. It is the greatest name for God. It is his personal name. It is his unique name. It is his holy name. Amen. Even Jews today will not pronounce it. It is so holy. Nobody would dare pronounce it. And when they read it in the Old Testament, they put Adonai there because they're so scared of pronouncing it. But folks, we're not scared because Jesus pronounced it. There in John chapter 8, verse 58, when the Jews came to him and said, How do you know, Abraham? You're not even 50 years old. Jesus turned to them and said, Before Abraham was, Ego Amy, Yahweh, I am who I am. It bothered the Jews so much that they picked up stones to stone him because here a mere man was claiming God's holy name and wasn't just pronouncing it, he was claiming it for himself. Jesus is Yahweh. That's the name we're singing about. What a name! Because Jesus is more than just a man, more than just a babe, more than just the Son of God. He is God's holy name. He took it upon himself. That's why we're praising him today, folks. If you don't get anything today, remember the Jesus that we're talking about, Jesus Christ, the Christmas that we're celebrating, the reason that we're here. All of these songs are to talk about one man, Jesus, who is Yahweh, the holy name of God. And that's why we love me speaking about him. Now, we love him so much that we want to sing joy to the world. Are you ready, people? We're going to sing joy to the world because of who this man was, when he came, why he came, and why we're celebrating Christmas. Let's sing joy to the world to praise his name.
comes the serious part. We've been talking about the Son of God. We've been talking about Jesus coming as a babe. We've been talking about what Christmas is all about. Folks, that's what God has done for us. Have you noticed? Christmas is rejoicing because that's where God has come down our direction and has given his life for us. That's what we're going to celebrate in Easter time. So what do we need to do in return? See, most people think of Christmas as gift, 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 gift. What am I going to get? What am I going to get? It's very much a personal, yes, very much self-centered. But Christianity says that there's something we need to do. Interestingly, there's nothing we need to pay. Have you noticed that? It doesn't cost a thing. It does not cost a thing. Because the price has already been paid by Jesus Christ. By dying on the cross, the price is paid. It costs you nothing. You don't have to pay a thing. You don't have to do a thing except one thing. You have to acknowledge that Jesus came, died, and rose again. That's all it takes. You have to accept that the cross did happen. The historical event that God did die on the cross. That's all you have to do. You have to accept that Christ came at Christmas time. God came at Christmas time. God died at Easter time. God rose again at Easter time. Paid your price. Accept it. That's all you have to do. Acknowledge it. And then no turning back. No turning back. It says in these words, I still will follow. I have decided to follow Jesus. How many of you have decided to follow Jesus? Yes. I've decided to follow Jesus. Those who are walking by, that's all you have to do. Just follow Jesus. I know you're following the lights over there, and you can't wait to get there to the great, big, brilliant, what is it called? The Wonderland. Wonderland. Winter Wonderland. <laughs> but folks, remember, this season is not just about Winter Wonderland. This season is about Christ, Amen. about Christmas. And there has to be a decision that you have to make at some point. At some point, you're going to have to decide, do you accept Jesus or do you reject him? Please, please make the right decision. Please make the right decision. That's all we're asking today. But once you do, there's no turning back. The cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. The world behind me, the cross before me. It's a huge decision. It's going to take an awful lot. No one says it's going to be easy. We cannot promise that it's going to be easy. It never is for Christians. Listen, we're getting dumped in all the time. We're even being mocked today. We get mocked every time we talk about the story about Jesus. We expect to be mocked. Please continue to mock us. Jesus was mocked. That's right. But Jesus is bigger, bigger than the mockery. That's why we love to talk about him. That's why we're singing about him. That's why we're praising his name. And that's why we're celebrating his birth. Folks, this is the season to celebrate his birth. The decision you make is your own decision. We can't force it upon you. It costs you nothing except to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Accept what he did on the cross and what he did three days later by rising again. That's all it takes. All you need to do is accept he did die and rise again and you shall be saved. That means you're going to be with him for eternity. And folks, I can't wait to be with my God for eternity. Now we're going to talk about how you need to go tell the world. That's the next song. We're going to have two last songs and then we're going to close up our session today. Listen to the words about telling the world. Everybody needs to know this story. Not just at Christmas time, right through the year. You need to tell the world. We need to tell the world. Come and join with us as we tell the world about what Christmas is really about. Over to you, Clark.
Jesus. Jesus. Who waits for you and me? Jesus. Who cannot wait to bring you home? Jesus. What is his name? Jesus. What is his name? Jesus. Is that not what we're talking about today? Yeah. Do you love him? Yes. You're singing about him all the time, yeah. aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Oh, what a beautiful name. Well, folks, we have been talking about Jesus Christ for the last hour and a half. And the reason we've been talking about Jesus Christ is because his name isn't Christmas. Christmas is the season we've been talking about. Christmas is this season. Most of you don't even remember why Christmas began. It began 2,000 years ago. It's an old custom, folks. And the gift you're going to give to all your friends and the gifts you're going to get, where do you think that first gift came from? The very first gift came from God himself. Jesus Christ is the gift of Christmas. It is God giving his son. It is God coming to earth. It is God who came as Emmanuel, God with us. 2,000 years ago as a little babe. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. And that's why we're singing about it, isn't it? Oh, I love that song. I love those voices. We've been singing about Jesus Christ for an hour and a half because people have forgotten this. Most people have forgotten what Christmas is about. It's not just Winter Wonderland, as beautiful as that may look, and as thrilling as the rides are. It's not just about Santa Claus or Frosty the Snowman. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, who was promised hundreds of years. Oh, no, no, from the very beginning. It was Christ that was promised in Genesis 3. It was God who said to Eve that from her line, from a woman's line, it had to be a woman, that this man would come. But not just any man. He would have to be God himself. He would be called the Son of God. He would be called the Messiah. He would be called the Son of Man. He would be called Yahweh. And those are the names we've been talking about all afternoon. Have you noticed? Jesus is the only one who is the Son of God. Jesus is the only one who is the Messiah. Jesus is the only one who is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the only one who came to earth as Yahweh. And that's why we love singing about him. Oh, where do you think songs came from? Where do you think all these songs came from? They all came from 2,000 years of church tradition singing about this event. They all came from what happened 2,000 years ago in that stable, that little stable in Bethlehem. Promised 400 years before it happened in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, that this son, this babe, would be born in Bethlehem. And he didn't just come to be born a babe. No, he spent 33 years on earth. And those 33 years, he grew up to do something that no man has ever done before. He, as God, died and rose again. Ooh, I love that. That's why we're singing. It's the best story in the world, and it's the best gift in the world. Folks, the gift of Christmas is Jesus Christ. The gift of Christmas is salvation for every one of you. Had Jesus not come, none of you could be saved. Had Jesus not died and rose again, none of you would have any reason to sing. Had Jesus, the Prince of Peace, not come, there would be no peace on earth. Peace, folks, where do you think it comes from? One name and one name alone. And what's his name? Jesus. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. Oh, I love that name. We've been singing about him all afternoon, haven't we? What a name. Folks, Christmas is the time of Christ. Christmas truly is when Christ came to, yes, to earth. When God came to earth as the Messiah, that's what Christ means. The Messiah, the anointed one, the anointed to save. He came to save every one of you. And that's exactly what he did. Are you ready for his salvation? If so, raise your hand and come and talk to us. Because it doesn't cost you a thing. It is absolutely free. You don't have to pay a pence. Folks, all you have to do is accept that Jesus Christ, God, Emmanuel, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Son of Man, these are all the titles he took. God himself came and died for you. God himself came and took upon himself all of your sins, which means all of you can be scot-free. 
and every one of you, if you just acknowledge that, what a gift, what a gift on a season of gifts. If you would just acknowledge that it has all been done by God himself, he took on your sin. He died and he erased every guilt that you have. Any of you that feel guilty, come on back to Jesus Christ. He has taken on your guilt, folks. And it is that Jesus, that Christ, that we're celebrating this season. As we come into Christmas time, please remember why Christmas began. It may not have been on December 25th. That's not important, the date. We have chosen that date to celebrate the coming of God to earth. We have chosen that date to celebrate that God gave us the greatest gift of all, His Son, Jesus Christ. And by giving us that gift, every one of us can be back with God again. Don't you want to be with God? Don't you want to be talking and walking with Him? Oh, I do. I do. But I can't right now. Not until I meet Him on the other side of death. Folks, come with us. Come with us to acknowledge what God has done for you. At this Christmas time, please remember all the glitter and all the glitz. It's beautiful, yes it is. But remember why this glitz is here, why the glitter is here. Remember who Christmas is all about. It's about one man, God, who became a man. His name is Jesus Christ. He came for every one of you. Every one of you can come home to him. That's all he's asking. Every song we have sung has been about him, hasn't it? What's in the name? And we've been bringing his name to Speaker's Corner. God bless you over Christmas time. Come and talk to us if you have any questions. Come and see us if you want to know more about Jesus Christ. But please, 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 whatever you do, don't go away thinking that Christmas is all about that over there. Yes, that's fun. Winter Wonderland is great, but it's much greater than Winter Wonderland. It's Jesus himself, the Christ, the Messiah, who died for you. God bless you, and have a blessed Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.